So um, I'll start by a little introduction. Uh, so thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we're about to talk about inbound as well as outbound ways to boost your marketing in 2020. Uh, my name is Camila. I'm the head of people in Woodpecker, and I will be your host for today. Uh, and joining me are two wonderful speakers. Uh, one of them is uh, SEO expert and consultant who is amongst 10 uh, top UK uh, marketing influencers, Łukasz Żelezny. Łukasz, hi, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure and honor. For us as well. Thank you. And our second speaker is one of the newest members of our Woodpecker team. Uh, our uh, growth marketing specialist who has been trying to crack the secrets of growth marketing for a couple of years now, Kate Stolarek. Kate, hi Kate again. Hi, hi all. Uh, thank you uh, for the great introduction. Uh, I hope you are, uh, you guys going to like this uh, webinar. Yeah, well said. Yeah, we hope you like it. Uh, we have prepared uh, two parts of this presentation, as you can see on the title. Uh, we will start from inbound and then move on to outbound ways of marketing. And during this webinar, please feel free to ask questions in the Q&A section you can see on, on the bottom of your screen. Uh, we have a little contest going on, so if you can see your questions answered at the end of webinar, uh, you can win an extended 30-day subscription of Woodpecker. So uh, go ahead and don't be afraid to ask your questions because, as I said, um, there is a prize to win. So uh, our speakers will, will answer a couple of questions at the end of webinar and we'll also announce uh, our winners then. Um, right, so I think uh, we can start. A couple of more people uh, join us. So Lukasz, are you ready to start your presentation? Absolutely. Okay, Doc, thank you very much once again. Uh, Camila, thank you very much for introducing me. Um, yeah, uh, I think a webinar uh, is an amazing uh, form of sharing knowledge, especially in this kind of unusual time we are right now uh, living together. So uh, when I received an invitation from Woodpecker, uh, I've, been, I've been really mesmerized and I hope that you will find this useful and I hope this is not the, the, the last time we, we, we see each other. So. I wanted to talk a bit about inbound because personally, I feel that me as an SEO, me as a marketeer, um, I need to, um, in majority, um, approach customers the way that, in fact, they approaching me. Otherwise, uh, I wouldn't be a marketeer. I would be rather a salesman. Um, so I wanted to talk about uh, how I'm doing inbound. And um, let me, that's me, you know, already. I'm living in London and I'm, um, I'm dealing with SEO for 15 years. And I noticed that one of the most popular article that uh, I wrote for my blog uh, that is out there on the zelesin.uk was actually about how to find um, clients for SEO. And I wanted to really share this a little, how I'm approaching cl uh, clients or how I'm making them to approach me. And in next 15 slides, uh, I, will, I will describe that. There are like three methodologies that I'm using. And I hope you will not only find this useful, but uh, also will be able to implement this on your own day-to-day um, -day, uh, business dealing and so on and so on. So... The first methodology is utilizing your email account to find inbound leads. So what does it really mean? Your email account very often is out there for years, no matter if this is a business email account or if this is your personal, uh, personal email account. Uh, for many years, I was hosting my email on my own server which is a horrible idea, especially in 2020. But thankfully I moved into, uh, into Gmail, probably like this paid Gmail, and uh, that opened like um, uh, lots of, lots of extra, extra things that I can, I can deal with. 
So email is one of the best source of leads. There is plenty of hibernated customers that may be reconvinced to start using your service or your product that you are offering. Now, if I'm talking about the hibernated customers, I'm talking about customers who maybe are potential customers or your colleagues or your coworkers or someone you met on conference and you had this initial conversation via emails and that was maybe like five, six, eight months ago, 12, 24. And that would be very difficult to make this kind of uh, qualifi lead qualification, I call this, manually. So thankfully, there are tools out there that can help us to deal with. But first of all, what you can do, you can and you should connect your Gmail account or Yahoo account, or if you have a list of contacts that subscribed you on your newsletter that you are using on your website, you should um, try to invite them all to your LinkedIn network. LinkedIn, in my opinion, is the creme de la creme of all social media uh, networks. I'm always saying that LinkedIn is like a Facebook without photos of cats and food. People are meeting on LinkedIn because of some purposes. They want to exchange information, they want to do a business. For me, LinkedIn is, is the, the holy grail of my business. And I'm always trying to make sure that the people who I met somewhere, who contacted me via email, who um, subscribed to my newsletter, are also in the list of my uh, contacts on LinkedIn. So remember, that's the first thing. You always need to make sure that your LinkedIn is growing and don't afraid to add people you don't know. Back in the day, LinkedIn was saying, do only add people who you know before. But then they realized that actually, and especially this time uh, of COVID is a good example that people are dealing more than ever online. They realized that LinkedIn is the first, play, the, the first point of contact. Very often people are meeting themselves on LinkedIn, exchanging some conversation and then going for a coffee and then talking uh, further down. Um, so I'm using paid LinkedIn also, which is quite important, uh, paid account. This is probably the best, uh, the best 20 euro I could ever spend, uh, because that gives me also lots of other abilities. Unfortunately, we don't have a time to go through this, but remember, make sure that you are improving your network by contacts from different other sources. And what you can also do when you will, uh, for example, uh, export a list of uh, subscribers from your newsletter and you will add them on LinkedIn and they will approve this, um, this, this invitation and your LinkedIn network is growing. You can also use these contacts from LinkedIn on Facebook and you can create a um, custom audience. And thanks to that, uh, you can start at attracting the same people through different platforms. So how it works, you posting something on LinkedIn organically, they can see that, but then because mostly people are using the same email address to log into various uh, different uh, social media platforms, then the same people later may go on Facebook and see the same advert and they will be first very much impressed. I received on Twitter, which is a third platform, uh, some, some messages like, hey, Lucas, I uh, saw your email, uh, I saw your message on Facebook and on, on, on LinkedIn, how are you doing that? So you can attract the same people. Moreover, you can create a custom, um, a, a lookalike audience based on your custom audience, and, uh, and that's another benefit. But again, very briefly, uh, make sure that you try to synchronize as much as you can audiences on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Obviously on Facebook, that will be for a paid advertising and on LinkedIn, that will be for an organic advertising. And now something probably, uh, if you heard about the other two ideas, this may be a completely new thing, Zig Parser. Zig Parser is um, a parser for um, email signatures. So imagine, how many, like 
how many different email signature you sell. People are using some names, are name, city, country, then sometimes postcode, sometimes phone number, some other doesn't use this. What Zig Parser is doing is connecting to your Gmail account and is trying to analyze email by email, email by email, and is trying to bring you a spreadsheet with name, surname, company, phone number, if exist, um, the, 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 the domain name of the company, if exist, and plenty of, plenty of other information. Moreover, Zig Parser is able to tell you how many times a person contacted you, how many times a person uh, received response from you. And thanks to Zig Parser, um, you can go as far as five years back in the history. I parsed 170,000 emails. No chance to do this manual. But Zig Parser can do this. And what I found there, I found a couple of customers who approached me and I completely forgot to answer. And then I could go back and say like, oh, excuse me, three months ago, actually you sent me email and then you chased me again. I completely forgot about this. Is this still... Uh, is this that, that, that deal still on the table? Oh, thank you, uh, Lukasz, that you approached me because we couldn't contact you. Yeah, absolutely, let's have a chat. Or you can go and say like, oh my gosh, there was this and this and that and that, a very good client. We delivered project, uh, we, we say goodbye, but maybe now they need me more. And I am an SEO, but I'm also trying to think outside the box. And I have one uh, client who is operating in a computer industry and he have B2B customers. And I told him about this and he came to me after the weekend. He was like, Lucas, you cannot imagine how many extra calls I have because of this methodology you, sh you shared with me. I found so many hibernated potential customers and I have no doubts that the conversion a ratio from them being a lead only to become a customer will be huge. And this is only your email. So your email is source of probably the highest quality potential new leads. Point two, your website and potential customers. What does it mean? Well, everyone potentially knows or most of you knows Google Analytics, uh, Google Search Console, tracking uh, who is visiting uh, your website from which country and so on and so on. But there is a way to know much more than that. So there are some platforms which are trying to match uh, available information like an IP number, for example, uh, to the company that this or that person is connecting to your website, is browsing your website. So this is a screenshot from a um, tool called Albacross. And I am a big fan of this tool. Uh, this tool uh, is working a little like uh, Google Analytics. There is a tracking code that you need to put to your website. And from then, whenever someone is visiting your website, then uh, you will, uh, if Albacross can match this or that person to the database of IP numbers and probably God knows what else is there um, that we don't know about the whole mechanism probably is quite complicated. Then this person will be able, uh, the, the Albacross will be able to match that person and tell you that today someone from BBC or, or I don't know, uh, John Lewis, or if you are in uh, in uh, India, then Reliance, Bajaj, uh, or in US, Welfar uh, Wells Fargo visited your website. And obviously, if that is something, someone from a company that have 100,000 people or 10,000 people, probably that's not that useful. But there is plenty of companies that they have in the database that have only 10 people or 15 people or 20 people. And it's very, very easy to go on LinkedIn, again, LinkedIn, and add them all. I told you that you should add people uh, to your network, even if you don't know. If you will add all of them, the chance uh, that out of this 20, there is somebody that, uh, you already, um, that already visited your website is very high. 
So once again, if you see there are companies that have maybe they are, I call this a uh, small to mid sized companies, let's say from one to from, from few to hundred people, there is a huge chance that adding these people on your LinkedIn network will say like, oh my gosh, I visited that person website. Now he's adding me. That's so unusual. I need to have a conversation with that person. So you attracting, you building this kind of hunger around uh, either your personal brand or your business to, um, to make people contacting you and then starting conversation. Obviously not every time a company that is visiting your website means that they want your service, they want your product, they want your uh, consultancy or whatever you're offering. That's the wrong, uh, wrong assumption. Uh, you know, you wrote a very interesting blog post that is solving problem someone is visiting, then you don't want immediately to jump on his shoulder and say like, by the way, I'm selling and would you like to buy? Um, because this is not how it works. You need to be a little soft in this approach. And there are like other softwares that are um, uh, offering a very similar, uh, very similar uh, ability to track uh, potential customers that are visiting your website. One is Albacros, I mentioned is Leadberry, Leadfeeder, and probably plenty of other who is visiting, who is visiting, uh, who is visiting something like that. There is also, uh, so you can do a research, you can test them, and and you can uh, find uh, which one works the best. Albacros I like because the the price structure is quite quite nice, and. When you find these people, then like I said before, you're going on LinkedIn, you're adding them to your network, and from then, if they are active on LinkedIn, there is a chance that they will see your updates on your timeline. Once again, the last thing I would recommend, it is to jump immediately to the personal message and say like, hey, I saw that one of you guys visited my website, do you want SEO? In my, in my case, I would never do this. That's too pushy, that's too offensive, too salesy. It must be a bit more, or even not a bit, a really um, much higher level of sophistication. And number three, the last one, find potential customers that needs your help. And let me skip from uh, a slide for a moment. Some of you may uh, know that there is a pop uh, ability, that there are some ways and abilities to track uh, hashtags on Twitter, like hash journal request, hash PR request, or for example, I need help with, and so on and so on. I wanted to step back from this because some of you may know about that. There is a tool that can show you um, uh, what are the websites that are missing something. And I'm using this for SEO, but there is potentially a much, much, much wider spectrum of digital marketing, content, and beyond that. So SEMrush, which is a platform for an online marketeers, is also offering a tool called Opti. Opti SEMrush or SEMrush.com. And SEMrush generally is tracking millions of millions of keywords and websites, how they are ranking, yada, yada, yada. Now, what they are trying normally to do, it is when you're asking, oh, show me keywords of my competition. That's our keywords. Uh, show keywords that I'm ranking. That's our keywords. But Opti is going much further down the path. They are going uh, to tell you the information in a pivot way. So you may say, show me websites from London or from New York, uh, which are operating in real estate industry. And that in the last six months, they were losing traffic, organic traffic. Or for example, show me websites that you think that in the last six months, uh, they were increasing marketing budget. So as you can see on the screen, you have different scenarios. One is a big PPC to SEO budget gap. The other one, the other one is marketing uh, budget positive trend. So that potentially company get 
uh, either investment or is doing well to invest more in the um, in the organic marketing or generally in marketing. Um, then the negative trend that company is declining, the performance is declining. And the last one, which is a bit covered, is like the company have a big competitor. So we can prepare some kind of pitch, some kind of uh, nice deck, which will present what you can do based on this scenario. You can say like, listen, according to what I see, you are losing your traffic. Or according to what I see, you have a much bigger competitor. Don't you think this is the right moment that after so many years being behind, you should think how to chase him? Me and my company or me and my service, me and my tool can help you to achieve that. Uh, I can see that you have massive PPC SEO budget gap. Why are you spending so much money on PPC and that little on SEO? Maybe we can deliver content and so on and so on and so on. And potentially, you know, because I am operating in online marketing, then I am kind of in a, in a bubble of online marketing. As far as I can get, it's like email marketing, digital marketing, content marketing. But I think that there is more, much more than that. Uh, potentially, this tool could be a very useful tool uh, for um, potential investors, uh, venture capital uh, companies, and so on and so on. When you will get a spreadsheet, you can then um, match or we look up this spreadsheet with crunch base data and uh, plenty of other data and find, uh, let's say, top five companies from specific industry that you would like to invest or you would like to acquire and so on and so on. So sky is the limit. Sky is pretty much the limit. And um, here is an example how I'm doing this. Uh, let's say I want to choose a scenario, negative trend. I want to choose uh, companies from uh, automotive, banking and finance, and beauty and wellness. Let's say that's are the three areas that I really care about. In fact, that was the three areas that I could take a screenshot. So this is just a hypothetical example. And we have a city, London, because this is where I'm living. Unfortunately, there is no other countries than uh, US and uh, UK. For now, but I think that uh, sooner or later, Opti will be improving that. Um, so I choose London and take a look. I have here 19 leads that I can download and you can see this bubbles. So that's the size of the company, organic traffic current and organic traffic max. So let's say organic traffic was on the level of 10,000 points uh, six months ago, and now is uh, on the level of 5,000 points. So they lost 50% of traffic. What's going on there? Is this just a fluctuation? Maybe we should take a closer look. Normally, obviously, you would need to, this is the best part of this presentation, you would need to pay for, for, for leads, but Opti, uh, as far as I know, through whole April and through whole May, is offering this tool for free because of the, uh, of the COVID and of the pandemic and because every company is trying to be kind of more helpful. Uh, so yeah, I think, you know, uh, it's something that I would really recommend to test. And, and this is pretty much the last slide uh, I have. And uh, right now I would like to uh, reconnect to the studio and uh, Kate is next. Hi, here is the studio. So uh, thank you, Lukas, for this presentation. Lots of practical knowledge. Please stay with us uh, for the Q&A section. Um, I hope there will be uh, some questions for you as well. So uh, we will now move on to our second speaker, Kate. And uh, as she prepares for her presentation, I would just like to remind our attendees that we have a couple of extended trial accounts of Woodpecker to give. Uh, if your questions uh, will get answered by our speakers at the end, uh, you will uh, have a chance to win an extended 30-day Woodpecker trial. So please remember to ask your questions in the Q&A section of this webinar at the bottom um, of the screen. Right, so that's it for the organizational part. Kate, moving on to you. Yeah, thank you, Camilla. I will now move on uh, to the outbound marketing. Um, 
um, I will explain and show you how to, how to get prospects interested in your product. And uh, in the next part, I will also show you the not so obvious ways you can use follow-up automation to boost sales. Um, but before we begin, uh, I'd like to emphasize the quality over, over quantity approach here because um, getting your prospect interested in uh, your products is not a one-time action and you should uh, perceive it like rather like a process um, because um, you qualified these people for your prospects but they didn't qualify you in uh, any way right so they might not be uh, ready to engage with you right away um, but the good news is uh, you can do several several things uh, to help them become ready um, as uh, Wukash, uh, I'm sorry, Kate. I'm just going to chip in here. Uh, oh, someone yeah. uh, said that they cannot see your presentation. Uh, so, dear attendees, oh, can you sorry. please let us know in chat? Can you see Kate's presentation well? Yeah, I will uh, share my screen one more time. Let me try to share my screen one more time. Okay, yeah. Yeah, should be fine now. What about now, guys? Do you see it? Can yes. someone? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. great. Yeah, a couple of voices. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. It would be uh, a waste of your time if you don't see this <laughs> presentation. Uh, so, getting back to the subject, um, after what Wukash presented, you know now that there are uh, a couple of ways you can find your prospect on the internet. Um, what I can uh, recommend you here is uh, that the more time you spend on finding the right people, the better results you will, you will get. Um, I will also strongly um, don't recommend you to buy the ready-made list because um, you don't know who else bought it before you and those people might actually they might be irritated and uh, because of spammy offers that flooded his, their, their inbox. Um, yeah, so even if you have a great product and uh, you wrote a amazing copy, um, you won't sell. So yeah, and since we're talking about the copy, there are also some things you should, um, some content tactics you should adapt or abandon. Uh, uh, first thing is uh, to be extra careful with salesy language and expressions. And by salesy expressions, I mean expressions like um, claim your uh, trial now, get your coupon now, uh, only today, etc. Um, I must say that I used extensively the so-called so power words before I realized that only spammy offers include such expressions. Um, so you try rather uh, show the real value in your emails and um, try to answer the question that your prospect might ask himself, what's in it for me um, in this offer? Um, you can also give a personal touch to your emails. Uh, you add personalization to your messages using snippets or custom fields. Um, why personalization is good? Personalization, well personalized emails are prospect oriented and they don't sound selfish. Um, and if you get your prospect interested in your offer, if you don't annoy them uh, and um, yeah, get them interested, they, they will be more likely to uh, engage with you uh, and in the result, more likely to buy your product. Um, there, are, there are several uh, standard snippets you can you can uh, include in your uh, emails, but you can also create your own ones. Um, on this slide, I'd like to share with you uh, the results of our findings because we analyzed our uh, marketing efforts and it turned out that email campaigns with advanced personalization resulted in a much higher reply rate than email campaigns without personalization. Um, but these are our statistics and uh, these are our findings and I uh, strongly recommend you to uh, test it yourself. 
Um, okay, you can also advance personalization with if, concept, if campaigns. This uh, means that you can prepare two versions of a follow-up sequence and define a condition to send your messages. Uh, the the um, if campaigns help you better adjust email content um, because you can you can see uh, if your prospects are really engaged in your messages for those who are less interested you should send an email with a slightly different value uh, and with those who have opened your emails for example several times uh, try to arrange a call Okay, here I also uh, would like to share with you another stat our statistics. Uh, uh, it turns out that it's better to send more follow-ups than fewer. I know. <laughs> uh, in our campaigns, the num number of email in the sequence, um, if, we, if we used four up to seven emails in a sequence, we had a three times higher response rate than uh, in campaigns with one or three emails per sequence. But again, this is our stats and uh, you should try it yourself and uh, see what works for you for your business case. Um, as you can see, it's pretty easy uh, to measure what you do. Uh, even if you have two paths, uh, follow-up paths, uh, it's pretty clean to see what works, what, uh, what doesn't work. Um, your subject line is also very important. You should speak directly to your prospect uh, in a subject line. You can grab his interest by asking a question or, or using time to create a sense of urgency. Um, but also you can say something controversial. And um, I'd like to stop here and uh, say a bit more because controversial is good, uh, but uh, your subject line cannot be a click bite. Uh, why? because uh, such a such a subject line prospects will most likely open your email but uh, they won't reply to it or um, they will react negatively uh, for example there they will mark your email as spam i'm including uh, a lot of emails in my in uh, lots of links in my presentation but don't worry i will send uh, it to you after the webinar so you can easily access them uh, and uh, complement your knowledge. Um, also, uh, something worth, worth to mention is a call to action. Call to action is a must have in every email you send um, because call to action is the, the next step to your, for, to your prospects. Uh, you basically tell your prospect what do you want from him, right? Um, and you should want uh, uh, something from him, but try not to uh, ask for too much but only for one action per email um, a good method to uh, check if your call to action is good uh, if you write your call to action and you still can't say uh, if, if it's a good call to action just try to do it the other way and uh, step into your audience shoes to see uh, and answer yourself a question would i reply to myself yeah um very important thing uh because i'm assuming that most of us or at least many of us would like to reach out to international audience and the uh, first thing uh, you think of uh, when trying to reach out to international audience is uh, in what language should your uh, email be should it be in english or should it be in uh, your local language or your audience's local language um the answer is it depends <laughs> it depends on uh, how comfortable your prospects are with english and uh, keep in mind that uh, some people are might be comfortable with reading your messages but uh, might be might not be comfortable enough to reply to you so just keep that in mind. Um, always try to send emails in prospect time, time uh, zone if possible, because this uh, will make them feel closer to you. Uh, plus you should uh, also um, think about email customs that are across the world. By email customs, I mean, I mean approaches to follow up, follow ups or uh, follow up sequences. For example, um, in Germany, 
people um, are not used to getting a lot of emails during the week. So um, the safe border will be one, two emails per week so that they, they don't perceive you as a spammer or, or um, you don't annoy them. Uh, but for, for example, in the US, people are uh, so used to getting lots of uh, emails, follow-ups um, and offers. So you can um, try to send more of them. Last but not least uh, on this slide is to stay compliant with local law. I mean here like the GDPR or CAN scam um, and more of them. Um, I won't get into details because it's a pr pretty complex uh, subject, but I included here a link to our guide and you will find uh, lots of um, links to other sources on the internet, good sources, like really reliable. Um, okay, and also a uh, very easy thing, but uh, very important is to keep the form of your email as simple as possible. You should be sweet and short. Uh, try to avoid any fireworks you can think of. I mean like HTML templates, pictures, GIFs, colorful fonts, um, etc. Um, because this, uh, this kind of uh, stuff may not, not only um, annoy your recipient, but it may also alarm spam filters. Uh, if you decide to use HTML footer with your picture, and uh, based on our, our experience, most of you like to include it, uh, make sure to consult it with your IT department so that the code of the signature is neat. Uh, but you can also test out a plain text signature, and I can assure you that it works. <laughs> Um, here I also included um, a screenshot of uh, how the structure of your simple cold email should look like. Uh, at first you greet with your prospect, then you should introduce yourself so that your prospect know who is he talking to and um, what uh, might be your purpose. And uh, then in the next uh, part, uh, you provide a value proposition. This is the part when you answer the prospect's question, what's in it for me, right? Uh, at the end, just before the signature, include a call to action so that your uh, prospect will know exactly what you want from him. Um, and that's all from the first part. The next part is, um, I would like to show you not so obvious uses of follow-up automation, but since we don't have a, a lot of time, I will present only one use of follow-up automation. Um, but at the end, I included links to other use cases so uh, you can see and test it out yourself. Um, Webinars with guest speakers are a great way to not only stay in touch with your uh, current customers, but also to present your company to a wider audience and uh, boost sales, right? Um, you can use follow-up automation to reach out to potential guest speaker, speakers at scale. You don't have to do it manually. And then you can monitor if they are interested in taking part in your, your event. Um, here, um, another tip I can uh, say and uh, provide is that if you go with uh, if campaigns, you can then um, again adjust the, the content and the messages you want to uh, send your prospects um, to the level of their engagement. So send one version of a message to people who have opened at your first email and a different uh, to those who haven't. Um, you can also use um, follow-up automation to drive more webinar signups. Um, uh, as first thing, you can personalize the invitation and uh, give it to human touch. This way you will um, also stand out from the generic one-to-all messages uh, since it's scale. Um, you can also monitor if the subject of your webinar was, is interesting and optimize future strategy. Um, and also the people who uh, decided to attend your webinar, these guys are also your leads. So you should cultivate your new business relationship and uh, after the webinar and uh, follow up with them. Offer them some additional materials, answer their questions, uh, or invite to try your product. Uh, you can also reconnect with your webinar no-shows 
um, pretty, pretty same way. Uh, you will gain their trust by sharing also expert knowledge or for example, you can offer a private Q&A session. Um, yeah, and on the slide, uh, as you can see, uh, I included uh, four more uh, uses of follow-up automation. Um, you can find out how to use it to upsell and cross-sell. Cross and then you can uh, see uh, on this one how you can onboard your customers with follow-up automation, how to create nurturing campaigns. And this one, the last one, will be especially beneficial for SaaS companies because it explains how to convert trial users to paid customers. And that's all from me. Uh, Camila, you can <laughs> take the microphone <laughs> back. Sure, I'm here. Thank you, Kate, uh, for your part of the presentation. Uh, and uh, now we're going to move on to our Q&A section, uh, as you can see. Uh, so uh, I'd like to remind you that if our speakers will answer your question live during this webinar, uh, you will win an extended 30-day subscription of Woodsucker. So uh, go ahead, go on to the Q&A section at the bottom of the screen and ask anything that's on your mind. Um, it can concern both of our presentations, both of our speakers are here with us, so feel free to ask questions. Um, you can see there is a question about the perfect size of a cold email. So Kate, uh, you mentioned the structure of a cold email. Uh, a couple of slides back. So maybe yeah. you could uh, go back to the slide for a second. Sure. Uh, and there is a question, what is the perfect size of a cold email? I mean, how many sentences, for example? Um, uh, there is no uh, rule of uh, sentences. As I, um, as I showed you on the slide, and as you can see, uh, the shorter it is, the better, but um, you still have to include all the relevant information. So um, I think that um, the most important is to be just to, uh, short, short and up to point. Um, and don't try to um, do too big introduction because your prospect might get distracted after a few sentences if there are, there are too many sentences and he will not uh, scroll down to call to action and uh, won't perform any action right so the shorter the better but but uh, keep in mind that you have to include all the uh, information that are important for you great thank you um there is also a question for Wukash. Uh, do you use Opti SEMrush for a long time? Seems that uh, it's a better version. Uh, I'm using this for a long time. I'm using this, I mean, depends what you mean long. Uh, uh, it's a tool that is out there for over a year. And I think it is beta version, but in the sense of they have plenty of things that they want to add. And at the moment, like I said, there is only US and UK. Potentially, they will be adding more, uh, more scenarios. They will be adding more countries. So in that way, it's a beta version. But I don't have any issues to uh, to, to to use this like that. Great, thank you. Um, okay. I can see uh, several questions uh, going, but there are still not that many. So uh, we're going to wait a second for more questions from you to uh, reach us. Yeah, please remember, Carrie, that uh, as I mentioned, we have a couple of extended trial uh, trials of Woodpecker for 30 days. Uh, if we do answer your questions live, so um, if there is anything on your mind concerning SEO, inbound, outbound marketing that you would like our speakers to answer, uh, don't hesitate to drop your questions in the Q&A section at the bottom.
Okay, there is a question uh, concerning, uh, let me just find it in a sec. Um, there was a question about uh, leads. Mm, so let me just find it one sec. Yeah, I can see it. Um, is there any tool that you recommend that can help to get new email leads for cold email marketing concerning GDPR? Uh, Lukash, maybe you can uh, say something about that? Well, <clears throat> so you need to be very careful with GDPR and that's why in the whole of my presentation I was so much attached to LinkedIn because LinkedIn is, and I mentioned the, the the account uh, that is a pro account, mm -hmm. which is giving you a monthly 20 so-called in-mails, which is ability to contact someone who is not in your uh, connection. And also, uh, I think if you're prospecting, uh, then trying to match emails or other data with a LinkedIn profile is not that difficult, especially when, uh, you know, uh, like I said, you're targeting uh, companies which may not be a size of BBC. And here you have no problem with GDPR. And if the person does not have a LinkedIn profile, it's very rare, I think, that this is a person who may be your potential customer. Let's be honest, today, majority of people who are professional have a LinkedIn profile, even like some people who are completely uh, in industries that you would not expect to be online, they also have LinkedIn profiles. So that's why I wouldn't, that's my best answer. I don't know that much how could you jump over these GDPR rules and rather I wouldn't, if I would be in your shoes, LinkedIn is probably the, the safest choice. Right, great. Um, so if you would like to learn about more about GDPR and uh, leads, we also did a couple of webinars last year uh, with our data protection officer. So you can also check our YouTube and learn more about that as well after uh, this webinar. Um, right, so let's just look at more questions. Mm. Can you show examples of really good call to actions that work? Kate, I think this is rather a question to you. Yeah, sure, I will unmute. I uh, included uh, three examples, but um, I think it was, it's worth to explain why. Uh, I include here three uh, examples of good call to action. And uh, as you can see, they are pretty long, but um, they ask exactly, uh, uh, the, they ask the prospect exactly what you want from them. Um, first one is, would you be able to chat on the phone for 10 minutes next week on Monday or Thursday morning? It's uh, pretty direct, pretty particular, particular. You say uh, that you want to talk over the phone, so you answer the question where. You answer the question how much time it will take. Uh, it will only take 10 minutes. It's not much time, so it's also safe uh, because um, we know how busy people are these days. Uh, and you also uh, point two days uh, um, on which you'd like to set the phone call. Um, and this is very easy to answer such a call to action. So I would say um, call to action that was really precise and uh, exactly uh, shows the direction would be a good call to action. And as I mentioned before as well, um, if you still cannot decide, uh, step into the, your audience's shoes and try to ask yourself if you would reply to your call to action. If this call to action tell something to you. I hope I, uh, I explained it uh, well. Great, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, if uh, any of you would like to learn about Woodpecker, because I can see there are a couple of more questions about the specific 
ways our system or specific features work. Uh, and actually 10 minutes, our head of inbound uh, sales, Bovik, will be conducting a live demo meeting. So I will include the link in the chat section. Um, if you still uh, feel like hanging out with us, uh, feel free to join it and uh, probably the questions about the specific uh, features uh, will be more uh, answered in more, more detail there. Um, all right, so I think we're going to wrap up um, today's meeting. Uh, if we answered your question live, uh, please drop an email to kate at woodpeckerco, the address you can see on the screen. I will include the address in the chat section again um, at, uh, at the end of this webinar. So uh, first of all, thank you our speakers for your wonderful presentations and answering questions. Uh, thank you to our attendees. As I said, um, on the chat, you can see the link to the live demo session that our head of inbound sales will be hosting in just a couple of minutes. Uh, and just to let you know, this is not the last webinar of this series. We are actually planning more content and more events like this uh, in the future. So make sure to follow us on socials uh, to keep up to date with uh, everything that's to come. Uh, also, if you would like to share your feedback after today's webinar, uh, make sure to reach Kate. As I mentioned, her email is uh, on the screen below. Right, yeah. so um, would you like to add something, guys? Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Uh, it was amazing uh, to be here this afternoon. Uh, fantastic presentation, Kate. I learned a lot and uh, <laughs> And yeah, I think uh, this is one of this um, moment when 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 we can share, spend time with attendees together and share a lot of valuable knowledge. So any feedback, even after, uh, let know, Kate, uh, because that is making us all able to prepare even better. And yeah, yeah. Thank you. Exactly, Ukash. Thank you, Ukash. Exactly. I um, I feel you, and this is what I would like to also add. Um, please share uh, your feedback with me. Uh, and uh, by feedback, I mean anything. I mean the topic of the subject. Uh, um, uh, if um, if you got what you wanted and what you thought you will get, and this is also very important for me uh, because we'd like to improve. We'd like to provide you. Uh, a bigger value in the future so yeah please tell me anything uh, what you what comes to your mind perfectly said and uh, if we didn't answer your question we'll still make sure to uh, answer it after and send you the answers to your uh, emails along with the presentations that you saw today uh, and you'll also be able to rewatch this webinar if you feel like it on our YouTube channel uh, very, very soon. Right. So thank you everyone again for thank being you. here and see you soon. Yeah, Bye. see you soon, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.